Hello, today I'm going to be unboxing and giving you a first look at the ASRock X670E Taichi Carrara, and this is ASRock's flagship motherboard for the Ryzen 7000 CPUs. The name of the motherboard comes from Carrara Marble, and ASRock say the high strength and also the aesthetics of Carrara Marble represent the key elements while developing the motherboard. As this is the flagship motherboard, it comes with a flagship price, and I find it on sale in the UK today, somewhere between £635 and £679. Okay, let's get it unboxed and take a closer look at it. So this is everything that comes in the box with our motherboard. So we've got our user manual. We've got a guide to install the CPU in an AM5 socket. We've got a fan. It's a 120 millimeter fan, PWM, with a similar aesthetic to our motherboard. So this is going to look great at the back of the case set to exhaust. And good to see that ASRock also include the screws for securing the fan. All of the M.2 slots in the motherboard do have a heatsink on them, but ASRock include this really beefy heatsink with an actively cool fan. We've got a four pin PWM connector on the end. So this is gonna keep our Gen 5 drive nice and cool. And we've also got this dongle, which plugs into one of your USB 2.0 headers on the motherboard and gives you two USB 2.0 ports at the back of the case. We've got four SATA cables, two of them have right angle connectors, two of them have straight connectors. We've got the antenna for our Wi-Fi. We've got two ASRock Velcro cable straps. We've got a badge and we've got four screws for securing M.2 drives and also an M.2 standoff. The ASRock X670E Tai Chi Carrara is an EATX motherboard, and you can see where the Carrara name comes from because we've got the Carrara marble aesthetic over a large part of the motherboard. Taking a closer look at the motherboard, starting off at the bottom, working from left to right. First of all, we've got a HD audio connector. Next to that, we've got a UART header, and don't mistake this for an ARGB header. Next to that, we've got a system fan header, followed by two RGB headers. First of all, we've got a four pin 12 volt connector, followed by a three pin five volt ARGB connector. Then we've got two USB 2.0 headers, followed by a USB 3.2 Gen 1 header. Next to that, we've got a clear CMOS jumper, a postcode error screen, which is gonna be helpful in troubleshooting any startup issues. Next to that, we've got two system fan headers, followed by a reset and power button. At the bottom right hand side of the motherboard we've got our system panel header where we're going to plug in our front panel connectors and just above that we've got a power LED and speaker header. Working off the right hand side of the motherboard first of all we've got eight SATA connectors followed by a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 front panel type C header. Next to that we've got the motherboard's second forward facing USB 3.2 Gen 1 header. We've got another chassis fan header, followed by our 24-pin ATX power connector. And then we've got another two 3-pin 5-volt ARGB connectors, giving us a total of three on the motherboard. Working along the top of the motherboard, first of all, we've got a system fan header. Then we've got a CPU water pump header, followed by our CPU fan header. At the top left-hand side of the motherboard, we've got two 8-pin EPS power connectors. The motherboard's sixth and final system fan header is just at the bottom left of the RAM. The motherboard features a 24 plus 2 plus 1 phase power design with 105 amp smart power stage technology. We've got really beefy aluminium heat sinks over the VRM and these are connected with a heat pipe with an integrated cooling fan so you shouldn't need to worry about your VRM temperatures. In the middle of the motherboard we've got our M5 socket and standard mounting brackets. To open the socket cover we need to push the lever towards the middle of the motherboard and then we can lift the cover up. So we take a closer look at our LGA 1718 socket. You notice that the pins are now on the socket rather than the underside of the CPU. And I think this definitely makes for an easier building experience. We've got four RAM slots and the motherboard will accommodate up to a maximum of 128 gigabytes of DDR5 at 6600 megatransfers per second overclocked. The motherboard features two PCIe Gen 5 by 16 size slots. With one graphics card installed in the top slot, it will run in by 16 mode. Although if you do want to occupy both slots, they can both run in by 8 mode. The Gen 5 lanes for our PCIe slots come directly from the CPU, 
and it's good to see we've got steel armour reinforcement over both of the slots. The motherboard has four M.2 slots, I'll go ahead and remove the heat sinks to give you a better look at them. The top slot is a Gen 5 by 4 slot and the PCIe lanes come directly from the CPU, while the other four slots are Gen 4 by 4 slots with the PCIe lanes coming via the chipset. It's good to see that ASRock have made use of this motherboard's EATX size by installing the additional M.2 slot over to the right hand side of the RAM. This slot will also support SATA drives, although be aware if you do install a SATA drive in this slot, SATA port A1, which is the top right port, will be deactivated. So I'll show you what the motherboard looks like with the optional Gen 5 actively cooled heatsink installed, and I think this is definitely a clue that the Gen 5 drives are likely to run fairly hot. It's good to see the motherboard features ASRock's flexible integrated I.O. shield. Taking a look at our rear I.O., first of all we've got a clear CMOS and BIOS flashback buttons. We've got the antenna for our Wi-Fi 6E. We've got a HDMI 2.1 port which can support 4K at 120Hz. Then we've got two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type 2 ports. You'll notice these are yellow in colour and ASRock have flagged these up as lightning gaming ports. These are designed to have your keyboard and mouse plugged into them and because they come from different controllers it helps reduce any latency while gaming. Next to this we've got a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. Below this we've got our gold plated audio connectors and the motherboard supports 5.1 channel HD audio and the Hemic audio. Below this we've got two USB 4 Type-C ports which support speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second. These ports also support PD 3.0 27W fast charging and as well can support graphics output from your integrated GPU at up to 8K and 60Hz. Next to these we've got three USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports and three USB 2.2 Gen 1 Type A ports. Taking a look at the back of the motherboard it's good to see it is supported with a metal backplate and the motherboard does feature an 8 layer server grade ultra low loss PCB. The wireless dongle USB bracket simply plugs into one of the USB 2.0 headers at the bottom of the motherboard and then you're going to install the bracket in one of the PCIe slots on your case, giving you an additional two USB 2.0 Type A ports at the back. So I absolutely love the aesthetics of this motherboard. If you're a regular viewer of the channel you know my favourite theme for most of my builds is black and white, so this motherboard is going to fit in really well with nearly all of my builds. The one thing just to remember is this is an EATX motherboard, so it's slightly longer than a standard ATX motherboard across the way. So just check it's going to fit into your case if you are thinking of getting it. The other thing with the features that this motherboard has, you really should be able to get the most out of your brand new Ryzen 7000 series processor. So I'm looking forward to building with it and also testing that out. So if you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and you'll be seeing this motherboard in one of my builds in the near future.